Is that real hair up in your head? Ladies, <laughs> ladies. I paid for real hair. Exactly. Just because the hair is real, it doesn't make your weave real. See, it's a weave. It's fake. Real facts, fake account, fake document. There is something missing from the female characters of Burning Sands, all four of them. While I wouldn't necessarily expect a black fraternity movie to pass the Becky, the first woman we see is in literal service to the main characters, and the next two are in states of post and mid coitus. The post one being Roshan, Zurich's girlfriend that he borrows money from. She expresses concern about what he's going through, but perhaps because of his deflecting doesn't end up saying anything worthwhile. She has a friend that doesn't like Zurich, and they break up when she finds out something that'll be easier to explain later. Alfre Woodard is here, cosplaying as one of Zurich's professors, often appealing to his conscience, questioning him about his focus and such. Soraya is here, playing Angel, a sorority sister and classmate to Zurich, who does nothing more than dance on him. In the movie, these three are actually more interesting than I make them out to be, and if nothing else, at least they're played by some talented people. They end up offering bits and pieces of perspective to the plot that just ends up going nowhere. Alfre and Roshan are both in Zurich's corner, trying to show him that he is bigger than the abuse he has suffered while Angel is just there to let Zurek know that he isn't cut out for it, or at least that's the vibe I got until they danced, at which point I don't think we even see or hear from her again. Hey, it's time to clear. This ain't for no GDIs. I know. Who you calling the GDI? That's what you are, right? A goddamn individual? Now, let's talk about Toya. The first woman we actually see, Toya might be the only character with any real agency of her own, with apparent loyalty only to herself and her values. At times, she's a campus concubine, at others, she's working at Whataburger, and neither one of these entirely tell you what it is that she does. Played by the lovely Nefessa Williams, Toya is a townie in that she is clearly of the environment. She works close, which implies that she lives close, and I'm not even sure she goes to the school. She has a rather nurturing presence in the film, serving or providing anytime she shows up. In her first interaction with the pledges, confused by their rather obtuse order, she tries to bring them some ease by offering a cheaper alternative, to which they decline. Y'all sure y'all just don't want to do 30 sausage biscuit meals? It's cheaper. Yo, look, man, just give us the 30 sausage biscuits and the hash browns, all right? Whatever, okay. Cut to her very last interaction with the boys and she is seen giving them some free desserts simply out of the kindness and even shows some concern for Zurich. I got some apple pies for y'all. Let me get that. What's up? Where's Zurich at? Yo, man, you got no burgers to flip, man. You ain't got nowhere to be? There is also something to Frank being the one who rejects Toya, considering how he ends up. Her relationship with Edwin helps connect the world of Burning Sands as it is a lot more complicated than it seems, and appears to progress off screen. They are in a physical relationship, but something about this party meant that Toya couldn't be let in, which doesn't stop her from sleeping with him and the entire line of pledges minus Zurich later on. It's here where we get the most and the best of Toya, find out some more about her character, and touch on an aspect of the story that is left completely cold after this moment. During during a regular torture session, Toya comes over and sleeps with Edwin, after which Edwin tells the pledges that they're next up, which apparently was the point all along, as we find out that this is just another rite of passage. Zurich's up first, and once in, Toya decides to take it easy on him because of his rib injury, and then they get to talking. Took you long enough. Come on, get in here before the club closes. I love Toya's energy and how Nefessa really carries that on screen. Prideful and very physical. Well. What's it gonna be, Kunta? There's a taunting aura to it, wild but not unkempt, while still very nurturing. Why would him treat you like this? <laughs> Who, Edwin? Police. Nobody makes me do nothing I don't wanna do. Then why are you doing this then? Your girlfriend know about this part of pleasure? The two of them begin to let their delusion hang loose here. Zurich forgets where he is for a second and starts to care, and though Toya's response doesn't seem too substantial, she does make it clear that how the fraternity treats him and how she treats herself are two different things. Take it back to what he says here. Why would him treat you like this? <laughs> Who, Edwin? Police. Nobody makes me do nothing I don't want to do. So why are you doing this then? A sentence that leaves his mouth without an ounce of self-awareness. Here he is, debilitated, body damaged by his superiors, can't even fuck if he wanted to, and yet he asks her about treatment, when only one of them is there because they want to be in the first place. I learn from life. 
I'm gonna write me a book one day. I'm glad that the story allowed space for us to hear about Toya's dreams, if only for a little bit. She's angelic to the boys, offering care and cooter to soothe the reality that they won't ever be the same after this. Rashawn would overhear Toya and her friend in regard to sleeping with the pledges, and even when given the opportunity, Toya doesn't go low at all, offering little opposition or issue, really. Even though that doesn't stop Rashawn from ending it. Also, I lied, we totally do see Angel one more time in the classroom. Zerg. We're done. The women in Burning Sands represent necessary distractions for Zurich. If only Hughes or Rashawn could have pulled his attention away from the fraternity long enough to make a choice. If only Angel's weird standoffish behavior meant anything at all. I say that Toya offers the perspective because at no point does she try to steer Zurich or the boys away from this because she can't and it's really not any of her business. The path that these pleasures were on was set and the best anyone could do is be there for them to soften the blow. The best character in Burning Sands is certainly Rotimi because he's the only one who gives a damn or at least acts like it but my favorite is Toya and the only reason I even stomached this nonsense for as long as I did was because of her don't give my shit away I'm just trying to get my paper straight girl I know I've been away I'm just trying to get my paper straight girl don't give my shit away I got some shit to say